This is the Houndsman XP Podcast. Good dog, get that bear. Get that bear in here. The original podcast for the complete Houndsman. The podcast that represents our lifestyle of extreme performance. Get up there! Get him! Get him! Yeah! Good boy! Good boy, Ranger! Uniting houndsmen across the globe from east to west, north to south. You know, if you're going to catch a cat or a lion, you know, you have to have teamwork. We take you to the wildest places on earth. Yeah, so how many day how many days a week do you spend on that? As much as I can to be honest with you. Any time that I get, I'm I'm out there. Join us for every heart pounding adventure on Houndsman XP. I'll tell you like I tell everyone else, I'm gonna hunt whether you're here or not, so you might as well be here. <laughs> Alright, this is, I'm already making noise, <laughs> Jed ain't even here. I know, uh, this is uh, The Truth on the Houndsman XP Podcast Network, and I am joined by, uh, on our monthly, this is our monthly recap episode, and we're doing it without Jed, because Jed is mule deer hunting, go figure. I think he's on like day 362 of not killing a mule deer. Yeah, I talked to him today. He still hasn't killed none. He says he can't find the one he wants. I bet the guides just hate him. Well, he's he probably showed him all kinds of deer and all kinds of good deer, and Jed won't shoot one. Yeah, they probably showed him the 185 inch, and he's waiting for 187 <laughs> <Yeah>. or something. <laughs> but uh, I am joined by Mr. Zane Allen. That's the voice you hear on the other end of the mic. And we're going to do our monthly. We still need to come up with a name for this. I don't know what to call it. Well, the Big Show Productions is still the show to be named later, I think. So. Yeah, we never did really name that one either. So we're just going to have to call this the episode to be named later or something. I don't know. But uh, I'm here joined by Zane. Uh, we're just going to do our, our monthly recap, and we're going to talk about a few other things. But we just got, what are we, two weeks out of the world hunt? Three? Um, almost three. Yeah. yeah. And it didn't go well. No, no. I didn't win a cast. I didn't either. I only hunted two nights. We come out Wednesday night, hunted yeah. Wednesday and Thursday. Wiz won an early, looked good, and then kind of fell apart late. Yeah, and Chris was hunting him. Yep. Now, Jed did get in Thursday night with Scent, but he hadn't. He did. He got beat early Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Uh, got a double cast win on Thursday with Scent, and then won early Friday night and lost late. So the same place that Rain got beat at last year, but the better than what I did. Man, I could not. I could. There was, there was a lot of good dogs out there. There was, and there was. it seems like every cast. First cast was uh, me, Rayburn Prince, Weed, and a kid hunting. Uh, I can't remember the kid's name. He was hunting Justin Davenport's dog, and there was a lot of earnings in there. Other than that kid, he hadn't been at it very long, I don't think, and he beat our brakes off. The I, kid. Did. Oh yeah, he well, beat good. us all. He treed. That dog treed three coons. I think he had another one in his pocket at the end, but I was out of it by then. I'd already went home. So, But, yeah, it was tough to win out there this year, and that is the first world hunt I've ever went to and didn't at least win a cast. Well, I'm guessing it probably won't be your last. No, probably not. I Unless see. you quit going. Yeah, <laughs> it might be my last. <laughs> Jed may not pay no more entries after this showing this year. but He's spending it all on mule deer. Right? Yeah, no kidding. But uh, let's talk about... <laughs> Let's see what episodes we've had. We've had the Wade Grasswitz conversation with Chris uh, with the Joy Dog Food, which I thought was good. Uh, the Wes and Brett episode where he talked. To, we talked about Ruby and we talked about some of the other dogs they got coming up. And then today just aired. We're recording this on Thursday night, the day of the Big Country podcast yep. came out. So. Yeah, I listened to it just about two hours ago. Yeah. What did you, uh, you got any remarks on any of those? Uh... I liked them all. I mean, I'd like to get a chance to hunt with country myself. I know you watched him go mm -hmm. in that 
podcast you guided that they talked about. You know where actually, you know where we was. Yeah, yeah. I come picked you up. Yeah, you that's on, right. Yeah, that's you right. was on us. Yeah, and we was that section. We hunt the dog hair out of that yes. section. That I mean, whole that's, section. That's you the hunt go-to it. place. Yeah. yeah, you hunt it. I hunt it. Jed hunts it. And during coon season, we kill a lot of coons out of there. I mean, a bunch. Yes. And then country come in there, which all them dogs look good that night. Cause well, I remember you called me and wanted to know if I'd come around and pick you up. And when you got in the car, you said, that's the best dog to ever draw a breath. And you said, not the best dog breathing. That's the best coon dog to ever draw breath. I still, I still stand by it. I haven't seen anything better since or before. I can't see, to be honest, and I don't want to, Strickland's head's already big enough, and Ashley's is small enough, I guess we can probably, they counteract each other well. <laughs> but uh, we 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 done spent two hours bragging on big country today, or an hour, I guess, at that podcast that aired today. But I can't express how perfect that dog looked. I, there, there's no way you could have got better. Well, even Moody. I mean, Moody was yeah. on the cast, got beat, and, you know, I dropped yeah. you off and then picked him, and I think he had his boy with him up. And, yeah, he you did. know, he got in the truck, said the same thing. He said, you know, he was yeah. hunting Junior, I think. Yeah, he was hunting Moby Junior. And he said Junior looked good, but he said that country just treat coons around. Well, we treat 11 coons on that cast. Bones treat, they all look good. Bones treat two, Ruger treat two. Moody treed two with, with Junior, and Country just treed five. I mean, they just... And there ain't a lot of coons in there. No. There was only 11 coons in that whole section. We treat them all. You know, everybody <laughs> around here, all the farmers are saying, man, there's a lot of coons this year. Man, there's a lot of coons this year. There ain't year. no coons in there. I said, come over to my place. <laughs> yeah. I said, there ain't very many coons there. No, and that's good. We got to have places like that because you look at you know say i go down to lebanon kentucky and i'm hunting a pro classic down there we can't have dogs that are used to train coons two three hundred yards we have to have places like that and we're lucky too yeah we've got places with thick coons yeah we got places we can go turn loose and tree them every three or four hundred yards and and make a common dog look pretty good in places absolutely but but like you said when a dog looks good in there where we hunt year around every week yep i mean that place was dog to death that had coons shot out all year it was impressive. And then I liked the Brett and Wes episode, too. And you're on the side of the barking dog. You know, we, talk, yeah. we oh, talked yeah. about that. You know, we talked about that the last time you sat down with us. That, uh, you know, that's something that me and Jed don't enjoy, but you don't mind it. You like it. Wiz does it. And then Brett had a good point that. That's what I was just getting yep. ready to bring up. Brett, that was my favorite part of it. You know, that's the easiest points a dog's awarded. All he's got to do is bark. Why not have one that barks? Yep, that's a good point, and it's hard to argue because you know, and I mentioned that on this too, when I can spot a Myers-bred dog, they're, they're pretty prototypical. You know, they got the, most of them got the same mouth. They bark a lot. They're, they move around pretty good. They're just... They're the same style of dog all the time. That's what Brett wins with. And, man, they've had a lot of success. Look at Ruby. Well, you can't I, argue. I give props to him and Jed and everybody that's breeding their own line like that that have a dominant reproducer. You know, mm -hmm. same way with the trader dogs. Of course, Wiz is an exception. But, you know, you get trader dogs, they're all the same traits. You know, they're struck for a quarter. They're by themselves, deep and lonely. You know, Brett's dogs are barkers. They're struck for a 100 and coon treers. Yep. I mean... Whenever they can find something and keep producing the same thing that they like over and over, that's impressive to me. They've done it too. Gosh dang, Brett. And the one, I mean, and I've drawn, I don't know how many of Brett's dogs, a couple hundred it feels like. It feels like I draw one every week. But, uh, um, and I've drawn, I used to draw Brady a lot when he was hunting Rush. And I hated that. Now that dog treated a lot of coons. Rush is a good coon dog. But you want to talk about bark. He made Wiz seem like, I mean, in the dog box all the way to the woods and then barked the whole time he was loose and then bark in the dog box on the way back to the, I mean, just bark. <laughs> just chop, 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 chop all night long. And that dog treated a lot of coons. I beat him some, he beat me some. It seems like I drew Brady every week with that dog. And golly, every time I say it, it'd be Brady Myers. I think, oh God, <laughs> I got to listen to that idiot again. <laughs> But Brady was a good dude. I liked hunting with him, but I hated that dog. I mean, absolutely hated him. 
And Brady probably hated all my dogs too, so <laughs> he's not here to defend himself. <laughs> he always, he was always drawing duds. He's probably like that freaking idiot dog with Josh packs around. <laughs> but we had that, and then uh, I thought, I mean, that was pretty good. I didn't know, and I knew Wes hunted with his family. I didn't know Wes started with his mom. No, I didn't either. No. And you know, I both of us have hunted with Glenn and Wes yeah. a bunch, and uh, I haven't ever hunted with Jared. I bought a dog off of him, went down to visit with him. He's a good dude, yeah, too. Yeah, Jared is a good dude. And uh, I had no idea that they all stayed out hunting with their mom when they were that young. No, it makes a lot it's of a cool sense, story. Though. Yeah, it is cool. It is. I wouldn't want to go hunting with my mom, but well, your mom wouldn't want to go hunting with you. That's probably true. <laughs> But, uh, so what'd you hunt at Squirrel Hunt, anyway? I hunted easy. You hunted easy, that's I right. I hunted easy, and, and I was less than impressed with his performance. Didn't look good? No, no. Did you guys have, did you guys treat a bunch of coons on your cast? <clears throat> no, Wednesday night, uh, like I said, I drove out Wednesday and hunted, and, you know, I, I'm not one to make excuses. My dog looked poor, but I just don't think he liked the trip and then mm-hmm. getting turned loose. I hate doing that. But rain I, won't. You can't do that with rain. I say I hate doing it. I normally try to go out and give him a day or two, but I had to work. I was just gone, you know, two weeks before that for the super stakes. Mm-hmm. So it was either not go or or go and hunt him. So I went out and hunted him that night. He uh, loaded up on a tree right out in front of us. I booked him on his low gate, and he treated about twenty seconds and cost me a hundred pump and uh i drawed the hippie dog with daniel george Mm -hmm. and he treated a coon right out of the truck that was the only coon they seen on the whole cast i think i withdrew at the hour mark and i went back and waited on them at the pickup didn't have nothing else to do so i waited on them see who won what they done and that was the only coon we had looked at on the whole cast we treated quite a few coons i know kevin i'm gonna give kevin prumer a shout out he guided me two nights what was that one, the club up north? I can't remember the name of the club now. One of the satellite clubs. I don't know. I got drawled out of Salem. Yeah. So I did twice, and then twice I went to satellite clubs. It was the same one. It was up there north of town, north of Salem, north and east of Salem. Kevin Prumer was there, and he guided me both nights, and, man, he put us in a bunch of coons. There's some nights. there's some good hunting around there. I yeah. mean, them super stakes, I, Yant guided me out there one night, and he put me in some good hunting. I think we treed seven uh, the first night I was up there, and then uh, I think ten. I think we treed ten in that cast of night. The night rain caught that coon in the corn and couldn't. Now, this coon only, coon probably only weighed about ten freaking pounds, and it looked like she had been through a cheese grater when well, just, I got up there. Just be glad you wasn't hunting duds. He'd been back at your feet saying, man, that thing's mean, Dad. <laughs> duds I could have struck and treed on it, though, because he wouldn't have ever laid a tooth on it. No, he wouldn't have. He would have made it and... Hopefully yeah. it didn't come after. Yeah, no kidding. But con- none of my dogs can kill a coon. I guess Rain picked up on it just out of my dog box because she used to be able to kill one. If she caught one on the ground, she'd get it, yeah. you know, or at least get it to where it'd get up a tree. She fought that thing in the corn for 45 minutes. <phone rings> Gee whiz, is that put your... <laughs> Forgot to do that. Well, Jed wasn't here for the interruption, <laughs> so I thought I could at least have one. That was loud through these mics or through these earphones. But yeah, I just couldn't... I couldn't catch a break out there. And it wasn't that I was, there was nights that she didn't operate. Monday night, she just didn't operate. She didn't look good. She left a tree. She treated Dan when she should have had a coon. Uh, Tuesday night, she trees a coon out of the truck, but she's like a mile. And it, there wasn't no coons in between here and there either. I mean, we wasn't, there wasn't a whole lot of coons in there. But she was a mile one way. Another dog was a mile the other way. Another dog was in the middle of them. They all four get treed, and we pretty much just walk the hunt out here. Of course, I'm struck for a quarter. Mm-hmm. And so there ain't nothing I can do. The dog that treed the coon out of the truck that we got to first, he got to get recut. Yeah. And then uh, he treed another coon, and then Rain treed, Rain was treed again with another coon at the end of the hunt. But even if I treed her by the time we got to her, we wasn't going to have time to do nothing anyway. So, And then Wednesday night, she caught that coon in the ground. Uh, Thursday night, she treed a coon in a hole and you could see it with the thermal you see it in the dentry you could see it with mm. the thermal everybody agrees it's a coon but you can't score it with the thermal right and so that's the only coon she treed that night and we only treed two coons that night i could have had 30 minutes to recut her and tree another one and beat them which she probably would have done but well i'm going to give a shout out here where was your tier one custom call well i had a big show game call well that's not tier one <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> I never give a shout out to that. That's right. So no, we couldn't get that coon to move. We beat on it and we squall, and that coon wouldn't move. Then none of them coons looked very good out there this year. Really? Nope. And I mean, you could see it. 
But even if it did move, I don't know if you could have still would have been able to score it because it had to really come out of this hole. You could barely see it through a knot hole. Yeah. And so the coon, you know, it, it was just Croson was on the cast, and I can't remember who else. But, yeah, I just – when she needed to operate to win, she didn't. And when she needed to catch a break to move on, she couldn't. So it is what it is. And that's, like we said before, you know, you've got to catch them breaks. Mm-hmm. But another thing we was going to – and I just never – Man, everything's loud on this table. I got to get those hanging mic things. But anyway, you just never know because who would have dreamed the way she looked all summer long and since really the last world hunt where we got her in the top 27 that you'd have kept her out. I mean, I thought maybe she'd catch a bad break in a late round or something and it'd take me till Wednesday. I honestly thought I'd be in on Monday. I really did. We went out there the week before. Uh, She'd got rested up for a couple days. Turn it loose on Monday. I'm assuming I'm going to breeze through this thing, and I'm not worried. I'm worried about the quarterfinals, and I can't even win a cast. I was getting ready to say, you know as well as anybody, it's hard to double up. But mm-hmm. I, uh, I was really surprised you never won a cast. I mean, no, I mean, some of it was her fault, some of it was mine, but it was just, it was tough out there this year. You drew good dogs. You did every night. And do you remember the numbers? I was thinking that on the way up here. That we talked. They had about over three hundred. 50 or 60 dogs every night, I know. Yeah, so you're talking at least 12, 1,300 yeah. dogs. Yeah. I know. I think they had 360 one night, may have been like the lowest. Don't quote me on that. I'm not sure, but it was a good turnout. I mean, there was there was probably 1,500 entries. Yeah, so on the plus side of that for us, there was like another 1,475 yeah. that didn't get a yeah, double cast There win. was a lot of good dogs that didn't get a double <laughs> there cast There was. There were a lot of good dogs. You know, I went through the uh, results on ProHound mm-hmm. every night, and you're looking at them. Another one that surprised me was Melvin. Yeah. Duel and Ma- Melvin, you know, I that dog was hot, and yeah. I really expected him to double up. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I, whoever got in the finals, which we got, I can't remember now who got in, but Weed and of course, who was the third dog? Mm, you know, I can't remember either. Now, I know Joe and Weed, and I can't remember who the third dog was now. But I didn't. I thought Weed would get in the finals with something, but yeah. that was the same dog I drew Monday night, and he didn't look very good. And, you know, it's just it just goes to show you that they all have their nights. Yeah. Off that dog, nights, good have nights. you hunted with that dog of Joe and Cole's goose? No, well, I, I have. I I turn. I think Cole was a hunting him last January. Yeah. As he would a have been a baby, yeah, baby, yeah, baby. Yeah. But I think we went pleasure hunting down there at Texas. And I think that's yeah. what Cole turned loose was goose. That must be a pretty nice dog. I would say he put on a clinic in the final. Well, that's what I seen Dustin put on. Pro Hound or Facebook or something. He yeah. had never took a beating like that before. Yeah. That was a that was and a coonshot. That's what you want to win. You one know, right Dustin's there. been beaten, been in a lot of oh, good yeah. cast, and yeah. so if you he's, know, if, he's seen all the good dogs. Yeah, if he's commenting says he ain't took a beating like that before, the dog must have really put yeah. on a show. Yep, that's what I'm thinking too. But it was just tough. And speaking of goose, I want to throw another shout out. Uh, Joe and Cole has offered up that. Yeah that uh breeding for him that they're auctioning off for the youth or raffling or whatever you call it for when the is youth. that well they're wanting to get it now it's going now and they're yeah. wanting to get it drawn for but it won't fill up maybe somebody will hear it on this podcast and buy some spots and on they it. can do that by getting on Burger's facebook page. Burger's facebook page or pkc i think it's pkc youth page he's PKC got a, youth. yeah, yeah i'd say a, just go to facebook and search for chris Freiberger and message him and he can get him fixed up anyway absolutely I yeah, mean, that's that'll be fifty dollars for a chance at a stud fee on a world champion, and, and be it pro- all goes to the youth. I and mean, that'll be the first litter that dog ever produces because that's a young dog, ain't it? It is, but has I, he has he bred I him believe before? he has a litter on the ground. Oh, does he? I, okay. Don't quote me on that. I don't know for sure, but I believe he's got a litter. Yeah, on I didn't the know ground. if they'd ever bred him or not. I think they've got a litter on the ground. I think. Like I said, I, I hate to speak out of term, yeah. but I think a uh, thousand dollar baby. You remember when Chris oh, had yep, him? Yep, I think yep, the guy yep. that's got her has a litter of goose pups out of her. I'll be darned. Yeah, go. So yeah, if you're listening to this, go to because that all goes to the youth fund, right? Every bit of it. Yes, yeah. Joe. 
Joe and Cole donated it. Everything they raised is going to the youth fund. That's so. good. That's, that was nice of them, first of all. And we need to make sure and get on there and get that filled up. So go check that out at the PKC Youth Hunters Facebook page, which they could find it. Yes. Yeah. Or Chris Freiberger. Yeah, you or know, search Chris Freiberger on Facebook on or find Chris Freiberger's phone number, send him a text. I've shared it on my page. Yeah, so. yeah. I'll share it on the Big Show uh, Hunting Productions page, too. So it'll be on there. But Yeah, that'd be good. Because, I mean... It, the youth world had a record turnout this year. Yes. And, and it was. And then uh, Jed and Yance got the youth nationals yep. going. Yep. And that's going to be an awesome hunt for the youth. And so they've got a lot of stuff in play that's looking good for the youth. Yep. I judged the, I judged the youth a couple nights out there. They were all great. Ran in some pretty good dogs, too. That Thumper dog. Uh, I'm trying to think of who owns him now. We tried to buy him. We were going to buy him, but. We just he was a little out of our price range. I'm trying to think, but that that was a good dog. The kid was hunting him, and then I can't remember the others. We drew another cast up with some good dogs in it too. The second night, but yeah, the kids were all great. We had a great turnout. It was a pretty good world hunt, other than the fact that I couldn't freaking win a cast. <laughs> that and the weather was a little on every yeah, side. And yeah, yeah, it was hot. Wednesday night was miserable hot. It, it was, was eighty one degrees, and when it we was turned just loose. muggy. I yeah. mean, it was humid. Yeah, we wasn't used to that because it was cool out here going yep. into that the week before. And then yeah, it just, I thought we'd have good yep, weather. I did too. And then it was muggy and rainy. And... Well, switch topics here, and we we're going to talk about this. It actually worked out pretty good because last night we recorded a point blank for the regular Houndsman XP podcast, and we were talking about uh, deer hunter and houndsman relationships. And we touched on some things, and this should air – on the Thursday after that, and I know you haven't heard that because we just recorded it last night, but me and Chris and, and Lauren sat down and talked about uh, hound hunting and deer hunting and the effect that hound hunting doesn't really have on deer numbers, and we're trying to express that to the whitetail guys. But you just showed me, and we're going to – well, how many acres is that farm, them guys from West Virginia Lee's? I'd have to look to be exact, but I think 360 yeah. acres. And then they've got another piece from Illinois that borders it, so I, they might be hunting on 400 acres, yeah. something like that. So, I mean, it's a pretty good chunk of ground for around here. It is, it is. And they've leased it for how long? Um, We're just going to use this farm as an example. Let me pull up my list. Okay. I, I brought the list with me here on my phone. This is just one example of one farm that is leased and managed for deer hunting and also gets coon hunted a lot. And these guys work at it just as hard as we do at getting yep. dogs ready. And I they're mean. very good, and they never complain about us coon hunting. No, they're good friends. Yeah. You know, I didn't know them from Adam until they started leasing it. 2010, it looks like, is when they started leasing So, they're, so this they're, will be their 11th this year. This will be their 11th year. Absolutely. And so that's been coon hunted all 11 years they've leased it. Yes, and prior. Yeah, and I mean, uh, that farm's been coon hunted by coon hunters for as long as I can remember. Yes, yeah. and that's another another farm that's just like where we turn country loose. Yep. That's one of our go-to spots because we can drive on it. Yep. You know, it's cattle pasture, it's some crop ground. We Wet, can... Wes Hamilton hates that farm Well, because Ruby can't win a cast there. <laughs> Sorry, Wes, but when you come down, that's probably where we're going to turn loose <laughs> yeah. because, like I said, I can drive on every yeah. bit of it. But... uh so, I mean, and especially me, I like that farm better than the one north of the hay shed that we was talking about earlier. I turn loose on that farm a bunch. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm always, you know, I'm always hunting that spot. At the, uh, at the hay shed, there's not a lot of crop real close. Yep. So, you know, they're, you know, down there, there's a cornfield yep. pretty close every year. You know, they rotate the crops, and half of it's in corn every year. So there's some pretty yep. good there's better There's better coon numbers down there. Yes. Yeah, there yep. really is. And so, in 11 years of hunting, now we don't hunt that farm while they're here deer hunting. Absolutely. About a week, maybe two before they come, yeah. they let us know when they're coming. Yeah. Two weeks before they're coming, we'll stay off of it. And, and it's usually they're here for about, what, first three weeks of November? Yes, they normally come the last week of October and yeah. then stay through rifle season. Yeah. So they're here about three weeks, yeah. you know, depending on where rifle season falls in November. Mm -hmm. They'll come out the last weekend of October, bow hunt for a week, stay and, and rifle hunt or go home for a week and come back. So about three, maybe four weeks out of the year, we're off of it. Yeah. So, I mean, but that's... The other 48 weeks of the year, 
We hunt the crap out of it. We hunt it. Yeah, I've started a lot of pups on that. We farm. filmed a lot of the big show production yep. up there, you yep. know, with the episode with Ryder and Chris yep. and all of them. Because they were all staying at the cabin. Yeah, we started at the cabin, which the cabin's on yep. that farm. We started at the cabin, went right down over the hill and turned dogs loose and yep. was filming. And, and we squirrel hunted that farm the next day, too, with the squirrel absolutely. dogs and yep. everything. Yep. And so <laughs> this year they killed, you showed me the picture of it, and this is their 11th year. How many bucks have they killed? Now, keep in mind, these guys aren't shooting no small deer. No. These are all very mature, very large whitetails. The list I'm going to share with you, I had him send me, and I asked for anything over 150 inch, which okay. in my opinion, a 150 inch deer in northern Missouri is a good deer. And it's going to be a, there's you know, not it many. It might not be a monster, but that's a good mature deer. But they're at least four and a half years old. Yep. They're going to be, they've been around a while. The, these are supposedly the hardest deer, and they are the hardest deer to kill. Absolutely. Like I said, they put a lot of time and yep. effort into doing it. Yep. These guys are pretty good deer hunters because they're killing a lot of them with a bow, too. Yes. So what, what, just go through the numbers. What have they killed over 150 inches on this farm that the deer hunters, or that the coon dogs are supposedly running all the deer off of? <laughs> Since 2010, they have killed. Well, when this list was sent, it was 14. Yeah. This week, they've added number 15 to it. They've killed 14 deer over 150 inch, their biggest one being 183, eight of them over 160 inches, and it looks like three of them in the 170s. And not counting the, and then the one not they, counting the 183, so four of them over 170s, eight of them over 160. And that's counting the one this year, too? No. That's going to be five of them over 170. Over 170. So 15 bucks over 150. uh, Four. And over half of them over 160. Yeah, and five Boone and Crockett deer. Yes. And so, and they don't, we drive right through where they deer hunt, right by their tree stands. They're getting us on camera all the time. Yes, cameras under their tree stands, in their tree stands. (laughs) I mean, that place gets dogged hard. That whole farm does. And these guys will call you and tell you, you ain't killing enough coons. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And they're, want, they're wanting you to go up there and hunt because they're getting 75 trail cam pictures a day of nothing yeah. but coons coming through. Yeah. And then take the farm that you used to own that's behind my old house. Yep. That had dogs on it literally every day. When you killed your last buck out there. Every, yeah, and you had pups running loose. Yes, I had pups then, running loose, had blue out there. And then we would hunt it. And then we still regularly could Regularly, too. Yes. And, and so <clears throat> what deer did you, how many deer did you take off well, that I was going to say, I'll just recap on that. Yeah. Just me, myself, was the only one that hunted it. 100-acre farm. Coon hunted every week. And uh, I think it was in six years I had killed four off of it. And the smallest one being 155. Yep. And the biggest one was? 172. Yeah. And the last one you killed over there, what, did, what was it? It was actually the 155. Yeah, that's because well, that's the one I'd seen. Because I, yeah. seen I seen that deer all summer. Yep. And I bumped him out of his bed twice coon hunting. Because yep. he was bedded in that CRP bottom on the very south end there along the Duck Lake. Yep. He was bedded in there Absolutely. twice. Absolutely. That's what, and that's where I think I was with you one night we bumped him. Yep. And... That's what. Yeah, uh, he had dogs run right by him, and and pushed him out of his bed. Now he didn't go very far. He went towards the creek. I'm sure he probably sat there and staged until we left, and then went right back to whatever he was doing. And I think I killed him on my second set. Yeah, you know, I mean, was, that was his home. So, and, you know, I'm a firm believer. That's their home. They're gonna yep. come back. You know, like you said, we bumped him. He back the next day. Yeah. So I mean, you look at. And there's two farms. I'm trying to think, what have they killed by the hay shed? Because I know there's other guys that hunt that, but they're not near as picky. Well, and it didn't come from the hay shed, but come from, uh, you know, same place that we coon hunt yeah. all year round. Chance killed that 197 yeah, inch. Yeah, that, that, was, that was a pig. That was a, that was a huge deer. Oh, 197 he went? 197 and some change, yeah. I think. Now, who actually? Because, I mean, the stories vary. Now, two shots were fired. At two shots deer. was fired. The deer had two holes in him. <laughs> he was still on his feet when Chance fired. That was the second shot. I guess he got him killed. <laughs> yeah, I detect a little bitterness in your voice there, Zane. <laughs> no, it's just a deer. Yeah, I'd, it is. I'd rather be over there coon hunting. Yeah. I've killed a lot of deer. And, you know, we that's what a lot of people don't understand is I used to love to deer hunt and bow hunted hard and killed some mature whitetails with a bow and a gun. 
and it ain't like we don't know about deer hunting or how to kill big deer. Right. We're just you know, making like this I said, up. I've, I've got five on the wall, anywhere yeah. from 155 to 172. Yeah, I mean, and, so, and I'm not trying to take anything away from the deer hunter. Like I said, they work as hard or twice yep. as hard, these guys from West Virginia, that uh, than we do on them. Yep on our coon dogs you know they fly out here they put out food plots mm-hmm. they put out cameras they fly back they'll call me will you change batteries in the camera mm-hmm. you know that they, they turn it into a job but that's what they these, like to do yeah getting these yep. dogs ready is a job too yep. sometimes it ain't even fun so it's we're pretty lucky in that the deer hunters that we hunt around and stuff like that are, are used to us we don't have any trouble with them we hunt a lot of deer hunted ground Absolutely. I mean, you look at this. Well, we're in northern Missouri. Yeah, exactly. Everything's deer hunting and ground. Just looked right outside my front door today. The deer hunters at least this right here by the house were pulling out as you were pulling. Yeah, out. I had to wait on them on the highway yeah. so they get out of my way. We, so were, like, we were just back there coon hunting the other night. Yep. You and you and Jed. Well, the, the night we recorded our last yeah. podcast, you guys hunted out there. I had the kids back there two nights ago. Was back there hunting, and I don't know. Maybe they didn't kill anything. I haven't. I haven't checked with them. But I mean, there's 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 big deer everywhere. There's coons everywhere, there's deer hunters everywhere, and there's a lot of coon hunters in this part of the world. And we found a way to get along, and most of it's because these guys are our friends now. Well, and this is just my personal opinion, but I think some of them are not worried about the dogs so much as worried about us being in there with a gun and a light, Yeah, you know? And I can tell you right now, if I wanted to break the rules and use a gun and a light, I wouldn't care whether you wanted me in there or not. Exactly. If I'm knocking on your door asking you if I can run my dog in there, I'm not wanting to kill your deer. No, we don't. We don't I wouldn't knock your on deer. your door and, and yeah. tell you I'm going to be in there with a gun and a light yeah. and then go in there and poach deer. <laughs> and, you know, I, I really think that that's part of it. You know, there's some of them that think the dogs run their deer off. A lot of them do. Yeah. But, but I think part of it's they're just scared that we're going to do something we shouldn't. And, you know, I can't vouch for everybody. Somebody might. But. Yeah, but first of all, it's, I don't know. I mean, there's got to be a way to fix all of it. Exactly, and, yeah. and we, we found it. Yeah. You know, like I said. It's, it's, been, just, build, it's just building relationships. It's and been 11 friends. years, and these guys, you know, they didn't, I didn't know them from Adam. They showed yeah. up from West Virginia and leased this place, and I asked them right off the bat, you guys care if I coon hunt this? No, absolutely, go right ahead. And, you know, now, like you said, I went up there the night they killed that deer, helped them get it drug mm-hmm. out, helped them get it hung out. We measured it. Last night I went back up there and they fed me tacos. I yeah. hope they come out more often. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> if they're looking for another place to lease, we got some ground back here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, once, once they figure out that you're not in there to do no harm or your dogs ain't running the deer off, it is a good relationship. I just don't know how to make that relationship happen to the neighbor that's from yeah. Pennsylvania that you don't see. You know? Yeah. Well, for one thing, deer hunters, and I talked with this, the very first time I was on the Houndsman XP podcast was quite a while ago, before any of this, and Chris had invited me on. I and, better regret that. Yeah, he probably does. <laughs> and uh, we were talking about that, and, you know, we were just talking about the same thing me and you are talking about, building relationships and, and being friends and all this stuff. And But the deer hunters have always done a really good job of uh, uh, regulating their own. You know, if somebody does something stupid, a deer hunter does something stupid, they rut somebody's ground up or, they, or they're trespassing or they're something. The, the first person that, that starts bagging on them and hating on them are other deer hunters. Yeah. And I think, you know, coon hunters turn a blind eye to some of that stuff, and maybe we could do a better job of, of kind of policing our own. And I think that maybe that would help some because there aren't very many bad apples, you know, as far as coon hunters go or deer hunters or turkey hunters or anything, really. But we kind of, coon hunters have a knack of turning a blind eye to the ones that are. And I'm not going to lie, I've had dogs on property they shouldn't have been on and I just snuck in there and got them out or Absolutely. something like that. We all have. But we don't want to make a habit of it and we kind of need to make sure and start shying away from maybe putting better handles on these dogs, maybe doing a better job of staying off private property. Maybe the, the main thing though, is just going around knocking on doors, making phone calls. We got on X now. We know exactly who owns Absolutely. everything. You can look them up on social media. You can look them up on the app and you can find them pretty quick. And most of the time you talk to people like that and you, and you knock up, show up on their door, you know, with a, 
you know, a little gift or something, and you never know what could happen. Absolutely. You know, a 12 pack of beer go a long ways at deer camp. You know, I stopped and, and asked a guy from St. Louis who owned some ground next to us up here, and I stopped and asked him one day in deer season if I could hunt. And he said, of course, you know, no, I've got these deer. I don't want them run off, yada, yada. And I said, okay, you know, it's yeah. your ground. I respect him, yeah. you know, perfect. I said, but listen, I've got permission to hunt all the way around you. I said, I've been on you several mm-hmm. times. Like you said, don't get across the fence. Yeah. Three o'clock in the morning, I'm not calling a guy from St. No, Louis. I know the last time I knocked on a door at three o'clock in the morning, I got a bigger ass chew than I would have if he'd have just caught me in there getting the dog. Right. So, <laughs> you know, I went in there, got the dog, got out of there, and I told him that. I said, you know, my dog has been on you several times. I'm going to keep hunting these places, so if you get my trail cam picture, I'm not going yeah. against you. I just want to let you know that, you know, I, I probably will end up on there. I'll do my best to stay off. Time it was over, he thanked me. Still didn't give me permission, but said, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. You know, if, if you go in there, it's season, shoot a coon out, get your dog, go on, whatever. He said, I just don't want you turning loose on me. Yeah. I said, perfect. You know, we'll, I'll respect that's, that. Yeah, you respect enough. me. I said, yep. I said, I just don't want you upset that I asked you and you get a trail cam picture of me next yeah. month. And he said, nope. He said, absolutely. And another thing is that our coon numbers are crazy. Yeah. The last four years, they've just exploded. I mean, we've always had several. Well, the fur coons. markets went down. And yeah. We have nobody trapping. And it I came mean, and it came off that fur boom where we wiped them out there for that two years. Yep. And you couldn't. I mean, a coon was hard to come by. You know, by January, coons were hard to come by. And when you do that, it seems to me, and I don't. I'm not going to. This isn't scientific fact. I'm not going to be aware of the studies, but they come back so much harder. Yeah. And so we come off that fur boom. We got them knocked down, and then they came back with bigger litters, more litters per year, maybe something. And man, they are just everywhere. And these the turkey numbers just plummeted. Yes, because they're raiding nests like crazy. Uh, our coons are everywhere, and so we can really help on a farm just like that one north of the hay shed. It's still got quite a bit of turkeys on it. Stuff yep. they're having good hatches right there. We've kept the coons knocked out of that place year after year after year, and so we can help. But in order to do that, our coon season opens. The same time, right in the middle of the rut. Right in the right middle Right in, deer right, right during rifle season. Yep. And it's prime time deer hunting time, which we understand. And so what we need to do and what the MDC does or should do is have a year-round coon season. Absolutely. I agree, especially if the fur market's not going to yeah. be. Because, I mean, us with dogs and training year-round is going to be the only ones that's working on these yeah. coons. You can't knock coons down, the coon population down in April. No. You can't legally. I mean, you just can't do it. You can maybe go get a depredation permit or something like that if they're destroying some crops or something like that. So what these guys are doing is they're throwing fly bait out. They're they're poisoning coons. They're doing stuff. And I I hate it, and I don't like it, and it's not good for the environment. It's not good for anything. But I also understand that there are so many coons that you just can't. I mean, they'll eat, you out, they'll eat you out of house and home. you got to do something. Absolutely. And so if, if they could just open up, you know, a coon season. Oklahoma's got a year-round coon season now. I think Arkansas does. I'm not sure. But most of the states around us, you know, a lot of the states around us have a year-round raccoon season, and it's not hurting anything. Yep. I mean, they're, they're a freaking nuisance anymore. And that would do more to repair the deer hunter-coon hunter relationship in the Midwest than anything. Because I could go knock on a guy's door in February when our, when our season closes and it's done. There's no deer season going on. Turkey season hasn't started yet. Everything's, you know, kind of at a standstill as far as hunting wise. And I say, look, I can I can knock your coon population down. I can help your turkey numbers. I'm maybe yeah. I get 30, 40, 50 coons killed off this 200 acres of yours, and you know you'll have better broods next year, hopefully. Yeah. And it's a win-win. And we can't. We're not. There's no way we can screw up their deer hunt. Right. What are you going to screw up for deer hunting in February? You know, you can't, which we aren't anyway, but they don't know that. A lot of people don't understand that. So that was one. That just that drives me crazy that we don't. Uh, I heard they're doing a study on Turkey Hatch in, I think, Putnam County next year. Really? And I assume for that. So uh, I'm a proponent of the MDC, and I think they do a great job, but they – they take too long to do anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, and like I said, I don't want to talk out of term again, but I do think they are working on something right now, uh, and it might just be the deprivation tags. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they're going to open the year-round season, but 
I've got a good friend that actually called and wanted to tell me how well he enjoyed our podcast last time, and, and he is on a committee and had said that they're working on something right now. So. Perfect. They, they need to. Yeah, I'm hoping, it, it's, hoping it's, it's something that it's will something, work. It's something that you can always take back. You know, we got right. a commission. We don't have to have a vote. You know, the commission can decide, and it can be, it can be in. You know, right. that's it. Commission meeting, uh, everybody decides, you know, let's have a year-round coon season. Try it for a year if it don't work. Yeah. Change it back. A year or two down the road. Yep. Said that day it wasn't a good idea. Yep. But, I mean, uh, they, they do have a good habit of doing things based on science and not on public opinion. And, you know, so that's good because the science, I know the science is going to say we got way too many freaking raccoons. <laughs> and there's no way a year-round raccoon season could hurt anything. Right. So. Well, and like you said, whether or not worth them, I mean, who besides us crazy coon hunters are going to traipse around in July? Exactly. And try to kill coons. Yes. You know, so and it's not like we're going to wipe them out no. or anything. I mean, we might help with the control of it a little bit, yeah. be it. And we don't want to waste a resource. You know, we don't want to just shoot coons and leave them laying on the ground. But there's so many people either people don't understand that you have to do something with them and we're here to manage that thing it's a resource you're here to manage it that's what hunters do that's what hunters have done all over the united states with every species and so if you're going to manage it and you're going to let us let us you know give us the give us the tools to do so yeah that's my theory but i don't know i'm just a dumbass coon hunter <laughs> i agree with that <laughs> Can I get a second? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right. What what else do we want to talk about? Anything, or have we about covered everything we want to cover? I don't know. You got any listener questions or anything? Oh, I know. One guy wrote in. I got to get your opinion on this. Thyroid dogs. You ain't gonna like my opinion. No, it's I'm... gonna be like the Barker. <laughs> we're gonna disagree. I believe. I believe we're gonna disagree. We are. Because I know your opinion. Yep, yep. And I want to get, I need to find a vet that has dealt and delved into this, you know, not with just dogs, but with coonhounds. Yeah. And I don't know of any. I mean, no. there's our vets, and our vets are great. Yeah. I mean, the Lettners over there and everybody at Cordon and everybody at Unionville and stuff, they're great. But they're going to, they don't coon hunt. They're going to run the test, and they're going to tell us what his levels are, and they're going to try to get the levels up to where they're supposed to be, and that's all they know how to do, and I understand that. That's fine. But somewhere out there, if anybody's listening to this that is a veterinarian that has dealt with thyroid issues in coon hounds, I want to get them on the podcast. Absolutely. Because I've got my theory. Let's hear your theory. <laughs> my theory is, well, here, oh, look, we're going to use Con for example. Con's tested. I haven't tested him in probably two years because I've been mad at him. I don't care if his thyroid's at a million or zero. But uh, when we were running him, he's always tested on the low end of normal at a one. I was going to say, which is 0. 0.4 to a four, I think, is your normal range. The Con was always at a one. Yeah. Right at which a one. Which would be low end of normal. Yeah. Yep. Right at a one. I think he was 0. 0.9 to, point, or 0. 0.9 to 1.1, 1. 1, depending. And. I never put him on the pills. I never done nothing with him. Duds had tested low. We'll use them both. Duds had tested low coming back from Texas. Uh, he got a throat infection down there in all that water the first year he went down to the yep. Lone Star. Remember, he came back and yep. he was just sick, bad sick. And he tested low, and we put him on the pill. And we put him on, uh, he was a point eight twice a day, I think. And uh, what is the name of that thyroid pill? I can't remember now. No, ones I use. Siloxine. Oh, yeah. Siloxine yeah. is what I use. Ones I use just say thyro tab. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is siloxine, I think, is what Duds was on. And we got him up to normal, and he was back to normal Duds, which Duds has always been pretty talented. You know, I never did. If we could have found something to cure his brain worms, I'd have really been on something there. But, uh, And he just, he was back to normal. He was fine. And I kept him on him for quite a while. And... I've heard, and the vet told me this, that it shuts their thyroid down because their thyroid quits making the, right. whatever the thyroid's supposed to make, and then the, the siloxine takes over doing that job for it. But I got tired of giving the dog a pill every day. I got, twice I, a day. Twice a day. Once in the morning, once at night. It's measurable. I agree. Skipper was the same way. Skip, people don't know the Skipper was on thyroid meds. Jeremy just took him off of him. He was fine after. But Duds went through a little spell after I took him off of him because we still hunting him some then. And then after a while, he was fine, but we weren't taking him up and down the road. 
and we weren't really putting him under a bunch of pressure. We was pleasure hunting him once a week, twice a week, right. no big deal. But Con, we were traveling quite a bit at that time with Con, and we were we went to the World Hunt, we went to Super Stakes, we were hunting some hunts around here, and I never put him on the pill. He was a a one whenever he made that run at Super Stakes, and every tree he made had a coon in it. He was at a one last spring when he treed 35 coons in a row. And he was at a one this summer when he treed like 19 slicks in a row. His thyroid's never changed. It's always the same. I think that dogs are streaky animals. All these dogs are streaky oh, absolutely. animals. Absolutely. I mean, you... Yeah, we're putting them under a lot of pressure. And I think if you test that thyroid enough, eventually it's going to come back low. Absolutely. I think, you know, like you said, depending on how much pressure, mm -hmm. you know, how much you hunt them, everything else, that's going to change. You know, how active they are, sometimes what you're feeding them. Yeah. You know, I think when they took the iodized salt out of the dog food, that's my personal opinion. That's part of it. Uh, I know for a fact that uh, the thyroid attracts the, attracts the mm -hmm. iodine. And, and uh, another thing I always wondered about was the collars. Absolutely. The thyroid, the thyroid glands in the neck. Yes. And we're always pulling on their dog's collars. They've always got, they've got prongs in them. Well, got... And another thing, we all run Seresto collars. Yep. Put them yep. right around their neck. Yep. Now, if that thing will kill a tick every time or repel a tick every time it climbs off there, yep. and you know as well as I do that nothing repels them things. We spray <laughs> down and still get them. If that thing will repel a tick, what's it doing to the dog's body? Yeah. I mean, it can't be good for it. I wouldn't think so. I know but every time yeah, I put we're a We're paying $50 I'd, to yeah, strap I, one on so we every, don't have to deal I know, with ticks. I know every time I put a terrestrial collar on a dog, I wash my hands real good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to eat it. No, I don't. And this thing's got it wearing around yeah, its neck. I hope it's Restaurant will call it sue us for this. <laughs> well, we yeah. surely shouldn't. We're still supporting. That's I mean, true. We, we still buy one every yeah, summer for every dog. We've each got four yeah. or five dogs. Yeah. We're spending a couple hundred dollars every no year kidding. with them. But no, I don't. I just think because true hypo or hyperthyroidism comes with outward symptoms: hair loss, weight gain, uh, etc. And these dogs don't have none of that. Some of them. I've yeah, seen some, some thyroid do. dogs with the with hair the, loss and the, stuff. That's what I would call a true thyroid dog. Absolutely. But Con's never, Con's always looked slick. Dud's has always looked slick. Even when Dud's had a low thyroid, he wasn't, he didn't look any different than he does right now. And uh, I just think it's a crutch a lot of times. I think a dog, goes into a, a dog goes into a bad streak and they go get his thyroid tested and it's low or on the low end of normal and it's at a one point. Well, they got to be, now the thing is they got to be at a three. They got to be at a three. They got to be at a three. So they get them up to a three and that usually coincides with about two weeks of rest and then the dog looks freaking good when it comes out of it. I'm not saying that uh, some of them are crutches. There's some of them that they say, well, this dog don't look like this. There's got to be something wrong with him. And you, like I said, you and I both know very well that our dogs can look just as yes. poor as they can good. But you want to hear my side of it. I get I don't, but go ahead. <laughs> Hold on. I got to walk over to the fridge and grab me a beer. You go ahead and tell me. Okay. I'm a thyroid person. I, my thyroid, you know, I had hypothyroidism. They killed it with radioactive iodine. That's how I know the thyroid attracts iodine. And uh, I had mine killed, so I'm on a pill every day. Got to take a pill, and I was the same way. They Is it siloxine? No, it's actually called Centroid. And, uh, you know, it took them a while to get my levels regulated where they wanted it. And if I don't take that pill, I'm done. I mean, I'm, I'm out of energy. I feel like crap. Can't do nothing. And actually, back to the deer hunting part of it, when I got mine killed, they said, we're going to kill it November 7th. I said, no, you're not. That's deer season. Mm -hmm. And they said, well... You're going to have to skip it. I said, no, that's like a holiday. They said, well, we can kill it December 26. I said, that'll work. Yep. They said, you'd rather miss Christmas than deer season? I said, sure. Who wouldn't? Yeah. So I got mine killed, and, you know, I'm like I said, back to the deer hunting part. I skipped that, went deer hunting. I walked a ditch out with my brother's deer hunting. I thought they was going to have to life flight me out of there. Mm -hmm. You know, I got plumbed down. So, and personal, you know, me being personal appearance on it or whatever, I see that if I don't have that medicine, I ain't gonna perform. 
So if I think that dog, you know, if, if he's an actual true thyroid dog and needs that medicine, I don't care how much you switch him, how much you lay him up or what, you might lay him up for two weeks and take him out and he looks good. Well, that's because he's rested for two weeks, hunting three nights in a row. Yeah. I, you know, he's going to feel like he's going to die. And easy is a thyroid dog. And, you know, I hate giving him a pill twice a day uh. just as much as anybody. But whenever I found out about it, he went through that spell. Mm -hmm. And, you know, me hunting with you, I said, well, Josh knows everything. He says this is just a spell. <laughs> I tried to hunt him through it. I'd switch him. I'd lay him up. I'd, you know, not shoot coons out to him. And he never quit hunting on me like my first thyroid dog. He mm -hmm. just couldn't tree a coon. And I was done with him. I told Chris and them, you know, we own him together. I said, I'm done with this dog. I don't care what you do with him. Call him, give him away, sell him. I don't care. Chris took him home, took him vet. Thyroid was down there 0.1 or 0.8 or 08 or something. I don't know what it was. He got him on some pills, brought him back to me. He just went to clicking and he, what time, he was rested. What time of year was that? That was in uh, November, December, because he brought him back to me in December. Mm-hmm. And uh, I said, because it was coon season, or almost coon season whenever you sent him down there, I think. Yeah. He brought him back to me, I think, the end of November, May 1st of December. We was all planning on going to Texas. He's what I was going to take. I said, I'm not going, boys. I said, I'm not, you know, I don't go somewhere where I don't think I can win. Mm -hmm. They brought him back. I went to hunting him a couple weeks, and I mean, he was clicking. I went down there and won a belt buckle. Been giving him a thyroid pill ever since, and he still looks like crap half the time. But. <laughs> I don't know. There's just so many times these guys will just take it. You know, they're automatically a thyroid dog, and we're wearing it out. I well, mean, we're wearing it out. Even it's, our vets, like you said, I'd like to talk to someone that has either dealt you know, with it a bunch or specializes in it. You know, there's surely, like, specialists just I've like— I've looked. Just like there is in human, yeah. you know. I yeah. go see an endocrinologist instead of a regular doctor. They're surely yeah, a specialist. But how many of those— you know, you take a canine thyroid specialist. How many of them have worked with coon hounds? Because I bet there ain't very many. You know, it would take yeah. a real specialist and be like, hey, all I deal with is thyroids <laughs> and walker coon dogs. I mean, that, you probably not, you actually could make pretty good money. I was actually, say that now. There's your new profession. Yeah, that's what I need to do. I'll have to go to vet school. Oh, that'd be a good job for my daughter. I'm going to get her prepped. But I don't remember where I was going with that. True thyroid dogs is what we was talking about. Uh, oh. The everyone putting them on thyroid pills, you know, yeah. using it as a crutch. The thyroid level will go up and down when they're sick, you yeah. know. Say they got a, a common cold, just like, you know, a dog mm -hmm. can catch anything a human can catch. Say they had the common cold or allergies or something, or they, they got a little bit of infection in their COVID. white blood cells. Yeah, COVID. Yeah. You know, that thyroid level will go up and down with them. And that's I'm 100% I'm convinced that's what knock duds is down exactly we treated yeah, the you, thyroid but if i think if we'd have just cleared his throat up and his throat infection up and the gunk he had in his lungs from being down in all that water thyroid comes up on his own we don't have to give him the pills it's not a deal but them guys are so quick absolutely to give and, him those pills. and one of my vets even told me that one time i was like i took him to the vet thyroid was low yeah. and he white blood cells was up and i was like well we need to put him on thyroid pills he's like whoa let's get him healthy yeah. it might come you know get yeah. him healthy give him some rest it might come up on its own and that's what i think that's what a lot of it is is you know stress that, can even affect the thyroid levels absolutely and I, that's another duds is always stressed out you know, <laughs> that's a dog that freaks out over everything. Duds and everyone that's hunting him. Yeah, no out. kid, and he stresses everybody out around him too. That dog's poison. I tell you what, but I don't know. We're gonna have to get get some some more dog examples and a specialist and, a, and an expert on here. Oh, absolutely. Because that is a conversation I think I everybody mean, wants to hear. The two I've dealt with and the two you've dealt with. It. It's yeah. not nearly enough because you didn't give yours any pills, and I give yep. mine pills till they die. <laughs> yep. And so we got, I guess we got both ends of the spectrum. Yeah. But I just, and I get, that's a question I get asked a lot. You know, you get listeners coming in here or asking me that or just even hunters or I'm out of the deal. Well, and it's showing up so common. Yeah. You know, like you said. every. And I'm such a It, dog it don't matter health. what dog you've got. If you, know. you test him enough, like you said, yep. eventually his thyroid level is not going to be where they want it. Yeah. And I'm such a proponent of having a healthy dog because these dogs are super athletes yeah they're they're actually super athletes and so the food i'm feeding the nutrition i'm given the supplements i'm given the the vet checkups all that stuff all that stuff's really interested me 
you know, for as long as I've competition coon hunted. Yep. And this stuff, and people think that I'd immediately be for a medication that would fix the thyroid level, but I'm not. I'm about as anti-thyroid pill as any. I know. And I realize I'm biased, too, so I want to get, and I'm open to some new opinions, especially if they agree with me, so I'll just go ahead and find <laughs> one of those. <laughs> well, yeah. and, and that's what, you know, like you was talking earlier, the stress, if you hunt that dog for, say, 13 nights, yep. And he goes to looking bad. You take him up there. Well, his thyroid level's low. Well, yeah, he's hunting well, yeah, for 13 nights. Yeah, he's been, run down. Yeah. You know? And give him two days rest instead of two pills a day. I'll tell you what is harder on a dog than anything, and it's especially competing, is summer. Absolutely. Summer is just, it just wrecks these dogs. I can't, Duds was six when I had to quit hunting him in the summer. Uh, Con's six now, and... He's never, he's always struggled in the, in the summer, in the heat. I mean, it's just, no matter how good a shape you get him in, some dogs can't take it. And the more you hunt him in the summer, the more problems you create for that dog. He, easy, can't take the weeds. Yeah. His eyes are always yep. matted shut. And, you and, know, you go out there and think, oh, I better take him to the vet. Yep. Give him two days and some Benadryl or something, and he yep. looks and as good as ever. You give him bad habits. Uh, you implore bad training techniques trying to get them right and you make mistakes with them and they the summer is freaking hard on a dog summer's hard on me yeah, i don't like the too. weeds and the bugs and the heat the summer's not near as hard on my dogs because i don't hunt very hard in the summer say, I, anymore i don't like anything about <laughs> yeah. it i don't even like the dogs in the summer yeah. so. but man these guys that hunt you look at at joe just won the world hunt and chris collins and them guys that hunt down there and and cole in the summertime that's crazy well, that's all they got, though. I don't care. I would take up golf or something. <laughs> I would find a different sport if all I had to do was Kuna in the middle of Texas in the summer. That's well, I, ridiculous. I'm saying the heat, though, is all they got. They don't ever have a winter. That's you know? true. I'd move. When we was down there in January, I loved it. it yeah, yeah, I do love it down there. About the 35, 40 degrees in, at night yep. and 65 during the day. I know. I we, said I could take this year round. At the Lone Star shootout one night, we turned loose. It was 70 in mid-February at yeah. night. Really? I was, oh yeah. Oh, I was down there in January. I got it was a, I got perfect. I got bit by a mosquito. <laughs> I was like, "What the f is that thing?" <laughs> How mad was you? Yeah. Oh, I was pretty mad. <laughs> but yeah, I love it down there in the winter. Absolutely, I love that country. That's that is, a that's a great hunt. That's, that's God. That's God's country. That's one of my it? favorite places. Yeah. Yep. All right, I think we've about covered everything we need to cover. We do need to find a thyroid specialist. Absolutely. Who's your thyroid doctor? Does he know anything about dogs? No, I doubt it. Well, you're going to have to call him and tell him to brush up. <laughs> if he can fix your dumb ass, he can surely figure this dog thing He fix out. a dog, I would think. <laughs> I'm not sure he's got me fixed yet. <laughs> well, that's true, I've too. been on him for about 10, 12 years now. So. Uh, just pull him off and see what happens. It works for duds. Yeah. Just tell him when you when he, when he you call him, tell him you're just going to move. Well, my, my hunting buddy says he did this to a dog once. He was fine. You'll find me laying out there by the kennel <laughs> by Duds. And Duds will be like, man, that guy sure took him pills. I wish he'd give me some. <laughs> yeah, you and Duds be fighting over him. <laughs> All right, we're going to close it out. I don't think I got anything else to add to you. No, I don't think so. All right, this went pretty well without Jed. What near as noisy. Yeah, that one phone, but that's probably Jed calling me. Yeah, just probably inter- was. Probably interrupted. Jed sending you a text. I, are you guys recording a podcast? But, uh, yeah, it was good. Uh, we'll sign it off, and we'll try her again next month, and we're going we're gonna to find a thyroid specialist. We're going to look into it. Yeah. All right, Zane, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. And uh, we'll do it again. We'll sign off right now. This is... The Truth on the Houndsman XP Podcast Network. And thanks for listening.